Hello and welcome to the first of seven short videos that will guide us through the design process for DC coupled solar PV systems. My name is Ian McCluskey, sales engineer for Renvu, specializing in international and battery based solar energy. Yes, this will cover both off grid and multi mode systems. Let's take a look at the topics. Before we dig in, this guide is meant to serve as a step-by-step -step walkthrough to design a DC coupled PV system, assuming you have some basic understanding of solar energy and batteries in advance. It contains a series of formulas and guidelines that will literally take you from start to finish with all of the key equipment specifications you need to get started with a real project. That being said, once you have the design results, make sure to consult with Renvu sales engineers and the manufacturers to double check your work. It is important to note, this guide is available as a PDF to use at your own pace. The download link is in the video description, below and on Renvu.com. First, we are going to cover the critical differences between multi-mode and off-grid systems. So, what is the difference between a multi-mode and an off-grid system? As an installer, the first thing to ask a customer interested in batteries is often whether they want a multi-mode grid connected system with battery backup or whether they want to disconnect from the grid entirely. A multi-mode system operates in parallel with the electrical grid when it's available. It operates in standalone mode when it's not or when you prefer not to buy or sell energy for regulatory or economic reasons. Compare that to an off-grid system which is designed to function only in standalone mode never connecting to the utility grid. The power electronics in this case are not listed to meet interconnection requirements, nor are they designed to. Both multi-mode and off-grid can be DC coupled. The primary benefit of multi-mode for most customers is energy security in case of a temporary or sustained grid outage. However, they are increasingly economically beneficial because, one, they offset energy consumption kilowatt hours for economic benefit while providing backup in case the grid is unavailable. The battery may shave peak loads to reduce demand charges. The battery may shift the use of solar generation into high time of use rate periods for increased payback and stabilization of the electrical grid. The system may be capable of a zero cell setting to prevent export to the grid in certain regulatory environments. And it may be required in the future to support the utility grid via frequency regulation and voltage stability. If you are interested in this subject, I, rec I recommend looking up California Solar Rule 21 requirements. There is an article on Renvu.com as well. Non-generating multi-mode systems are the simplest use case for a multi-mode inverter, where it charges the battery from the grid and inverts the energy from the battery to the electrical grid or loads. They actually involve no solar PV energy on site. The batteries generally stay at full charge to provide backup only. These have existed for years, primarily in areas where the grid is very unreliable and more often for buildings with critical energy requirements such as hospitals, government buildings, and mili military installations. More recently, we see non-generating multi-mode systems installed for massive energy users such as universities and sports stadiums. For example, Levi Stadium in Santa Clara contains a series of massive lithium ion batteries that discharge when the stadium fires up its machinery to prevent an expensive peak demand spike. This market will continue to expand in the years ahead for such commercial facilities. DC coupled multi-mode systems are the most common use for multi-mode inverters. The inverter is able to charge the battery from both the grid and solar energy through its integrated DC charge controller. It can also invert the DC energy from the battery to power electrical loads directly or send it straight to the electrical grid for net metering sale. Most of the most popular new integrated battery backup systems such as the SolarEdge Storage and SMA Storage Inverter are DC coupled. Electricity from the grid can pass through the multi-mode inverter directly to loads if the batteries are fully charged and the solar array is not producing enough to cover it. DC coupled off-grid systems still make up for the vast majority of battery-based solar PV systems in the US. Maybe not by total battery capacity anymore, but certainly by total number of installed systems. In fact, this type of system was more common than standard grid tie solar for years before legislation was passed to allow solar customers to connect to the grid. There are many decades old DC coupled off-grid systems still in operation today. Off-grid or standalone inverters do not contain integrated chargers nor are they listed for connection to the utility grid. They invert energy from the battery directly to the electrical loads 
while DC charge controllers charge the battery from the solar array. The most important consideration for these systems is to provide 100% of the required energy every day of the year, especially during the worst case design month, or make up for any marginal shortage with the presence of a fossil fuel generator. We will not factor generators into this design guide. The off-grid inverters in these systems are different than multi-mode inverters in that they have no integrated charge controllers because the only energy source is the DC battery bank. Basically, the solar is the generator and only means of charging the batteries. Alright, stay tuned for the next video in this playlist to get started with the numbers.